What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with a Monday Night Football edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me on this. Video goes a long way for you. That way you become apprised whatever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. We're talking, of course, Atlanta at Philly. Looking forward to this football game. If you are too, well, first off, hit that like button for me. It goes a very, very long way. Subscribe the YouTube channel because we've got great analysts here covering college football, NFL, everything that you need in the football landscape. But I'm also covering MLB still. I know a lot of people looking for those MLB videos. Well, still breaking it down, still putting in that work, Devin. Don't give up. We got Lindy 50. You can sign up 50% off all of my picks there. If I bet it, you're going to see it just by that. Look at that beautiful updated graphic because Tails, that is the name of it, friends. Tails by Odd Chopper. If you want to tail me and all of my plays as well as some other sharp analysts here in the industry, take a look at their portfolios. 50% off of mine using code LINDY50. So check that out. Uh, if you feel so inclined, would love to have you in that community. We can cheer on Jamison Williams together because it feels like I just am going to be jamming stuff like that. Covers it in one catch. Oh, it's a beautiful time to be alive. But we lightered it up here. We'll see how that ends up panning out. But let's get to the plays here, shall we? Producer Jacob. Oh, yeah. We got a great game before us. Going to talk about a little what we saw week one. Don't want to be too crazy reaction, but huge news on the Philly side. Let's get to the picks. We've got the Atlanta Falcons visiting Philly. Oh, going to the link. Here we go. Uh, going to Lincoln Financial, Philly. 46 and a half total. Uh, I think that's pretty darn efficient here at this point in time. And obviously, if you had jumped in early on it, Atlanta, well, this number came down about a half point point here for a wide receiver piece of news, but it's a big one. A.J. Brown, yeah, he's enough to move a line a little bit, if you ask me. The big framed A.J. Brown, he's not going to be out there. Injury report popped up on Friday. We've seen that a number of times already this early NFL season, so be paying attention to it. But leaning into the lean portion of the program, Philly, they go to Brazil for their opener, take on Green Bay, take care of business. Ended up having Saquon Barkley run amok all over Green Bay. As for Atlanta, the complete opposite. Threw up an absolute dud up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I'm on the under of every single thing that has to do with Atlanta this season, under nine and a half win total, under on, on pretty much everything across the board that you could possibly imagine. I'm on Tampa Bay, and uh, well, I was going to hedge out on a little bit in New Orleans here too, because I just feel so confident that one of those two are going to end up winning this NFC South. And Atlanta, Kirk Cousins does not look right. Uh, again, you pay a guy $50 million a year and not really knowing what his Achilles situation is. I think based on what we saw in week one, maybe the Michael Penix new, uh, the Me Pe Michael Penix Jr. draft selection made a lot more sense. But again, you kind of made your bet here with Kirk Cousins. He's going to get rolled out there in Philly where the last two appearances with my Minnesota Vikings, he got completely decimated on my birthday, September 19th. So yeah, we'll talk about that on is it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday night football. We'll be able to celebrate my birthday. You can send me a gift by just hitting the like button. But uh, we are going to start with the leans here. It's all about Kellen Moore. When it comes to the Philadelphia offense, the new offensive co coordinator in town, he's ready to rock and roll with a new slot player in Devonta Smith. Now, Devonta Smith, he's one of those guys in framed. Those were always the question marks coming out of Alabama, but there's no doubt his route running ability, his talent is absolutely there. Most guys who are, you know, Heisman's, I mean, he's an absolute freak of nature, Devonta Smith is. I'm very excited to see him out of the slot here if this usage maintains. For 60% of the snaps out of the slot position, had never exceeded 32% in a single season up until this point. So Kellen Moore, he had C.D. Lamb to work with, Keenan Allen to work with, and now Devonta Smith, it seems like, is going to be that slot guy. But the numbers have kind of taken a big hike from week one to week two. We're seeing some of those adjustments. And with the A.J. Brown news, we could see this pushed up even higher beyond 77, 78, up into 80 here for Devonta Smith against Atlanta. Has enough corners to, to make this somewhat noteworthy. Obviously, they played against Justin Fields, not exactly pass happy in week one. So I don't know what to make entirely of the secondary, but I do know they're a below average defense, in my opinion, even with the acquisitions that they ended up. Uh, just, I mean, they are all in on this season, and it is going to be worrisome if Kirk Cousins looks the way that he did in this pocket. So uh, let me fire this up. Let me fire this up, friends. We're going to look at Devonta Smith right from the get-go. Anytime touchdown. I think that's the only way to maybe invest in it, but that's going to be a lean for me. I have not bet it yet. That's why we go lean like lock as we talk about those things. But in addition, on the Atlanta side, I do think Kyle Pitts, 38 and a half receiving yards. This guy was a talented, probably the most highly touted tight end coming out of the draft in years and years and years. Out of Florida, freak of nature, primarily out there to pass, to pass catch, not doing any blocking for the most part. 
38 and a half receiving yards is a low number. Look through Kirk Cousins' history. He is constantly targeting the tight end position. Made TJ Hawkinson an absolute fantasy stud. He found ways in, I mean, going back to Washington days, we've seen Kirk Cousins find and key in on the tight end position. He had Justin Jefferson for the wide receiver position to work with, so a little bit of an outlier there. But uh, Logan Thomas there in Washington was an absolute stud there too. If that Achilles is still an issue, he's not able to plan as much. You're looking at Kyle Pitts potentially having more usage than a Drake London who is going to go further downfield. Ray Rue McLeod got peppered with targets as a result because, again, shorter yardage out of the slot makes sense to me. So Kyle Pitts, that looks okay to me, but neither of these are sadly going to be plays. Currently best number, minus 110 at Penny on the Kyle Pitts number. Plus 125 bet MGM, but again, at Penny, plus 149. Pinnacle, that being a sp sharp sports book, one that a lot of people use as like a data-driven argument to say this is where we should kind of be if they're drastically different like that touchdown number for Devonta Smith compared to where the market is well it's probably a bad bet and people are probably just going to bet it anyway so pay close attention to it if it gets better into that plus 135 plus 140 range I'll contemplate it again but wanted to throw that one out there because I know a lot of people are looking at Devonta Smith what you really want to be looking at is bet 365 you have an opportunity right now to sign up bet five get 200 in bonus bets if you are in you S of A, and you're signing up over at anywhere. I mean, this is a world, uh, worldwide sports book. It exists over in Europe. It exists in the States now as well. You've got Pennsylvania. You just added it. You've got a number of places that you can fire up at 365. If you have access to it, all you have to do is go to the link below, bet $5, and you get $200 in bonus bets. No questions asked. Only if you're 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. If you have a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. To the likes, to the locks, let's get to the pitch. All right, we set the framework. We talked through a lot of these plays, but now is where it gets fun for me because I do really, really like these plays coming up. I think we saw a little bit of an overcorrection here from the six, six and a half down to five and a half. There are like alternates of three and a half, but think about the key numbers. We got three, we got seven. The things in the middle, the five that have to be very juice conscious. Just, what I mean is that there are a lot of books that are hanging out bad fives, bad four and a halves that are minus 125, minus 130, people wanting to jump in there. When I think you just take the standard minus 110 here on the five and a half, I look at Philadelphia at home defensively. They did a lot of really good things about uh, against Green Bay, kept a lot of that wide receiver core outside of some big plays of Jaden Reed. They kept them pretty much in check. They're constantly going to be relied upon uh, that, that offensive line. It's Detroit, it's Philly, it's everybody else in the NFL as far as an offensive line goes. And Saquon Barkley, I mean, if you're a Giants fan, just, just Godspeed to you, my friends. Philly, five and a half, minus 110. It's kind of the prevailing number just about everywhere. FanDuel, Caesars, I think they're the better football team. I think you want to be invested there. And it's Kirk Cousins in primetime. Did I even throw that out there yet? I'm sure we're going to hear that 48,000 times. Can't wait. Can't wait. But hey, as long as the ticket cashes, I don't really care. Uh, again, if you guys want to check out Tails, I'll have all of my updated plays, and you can utilize that. Lindy50, we'll just throw it up on the screen super quick. 50% off, first week or month, Lindy50. That is what you need there, and you can come hang out with me in that premium Discord. But let's get to the lock, because this is a good one. South Dakota boy over here. So a little bit of a stand for this guy, as is South Dakota State legend, if you will. We've had a couple of tight ends that have looked really, really good. A couple more coming down the pipeline in the NFL draft in the next couple of years. We've got some talented tight ends at kind of the, the, the school everybody in South Dakota has adopted. South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits, kind of an FCS darling at this point in time. Just title after title. They're the new NDSU, if you will, North Dakota State. Uh, the Bison now, well, they're not as good as what South Dakota State has been here in recent years, that's for sure. And one of the star products, Dallas frickin' Goddard. He is very, very good at the catching of the footballs. In fact, I'd say that they've been underutilized his skill set over the course of his tenure there. But once again, go to Kellen Moore, whether it was Gerald Everett with the Chargers at times. Jake Ferguson, uh, you know, looking at a, a South Dakota boy again, Rapid City, South Dakota. How, where are these guys coming from? Just cornbread men. But anywho, uh, from a pass catching perspective, Atlanta, they were pretty terrible against the tight end position from a fantasy perspective last season. I believe sixth is what is on my sheet. So there you go. We will go with that in terms of fantasy points allowed to the tight end position per game in half PPR. So looking at that, well, you're seeing kind of a little bit of a pass funnel towards the Atlanta defense. And you go through some of these interior pieces. I'm just not a fan of their defense in any way, shape or form relative to what the field is or relative to what the marketplace is in this case 
And as such, I think Dallas Goddard is a great bet. And we're going to split it up here. So this is an interesting lock because I kind of want to get exposure to both. Maybe it's just because Jamison Williams in the ladder felt so, so good. We'll see how it finishes up here. That game's coming to coming to a head. But uh, we are very much invested in Dallas Goddard to catch the football out of the backfield. He had over he ran over around over 75% of the dropbacks. He was on the field ad nauseum there for Philly. They need to have other pass catchers step up and, well, I don't really trust anybody else there. Do you trust Jahan Dotson? I don't trust Jahan Dotson. Washington surely did not trust Jahan Dotson unloading him for a bag of potato chips. But I think Dallas Goddard ends up being more utilized in this game with no A.J. Brown on the field. You want to bet these now, I think, over three and a half receptions for half unit minus 160 at FanDuel and over four and a half receptions plus 105. These are both grading for me. And so in those kind of instances, Kind of like splitting exposure where, you know, you you don't necessarily want to have the full unit on the minus 160. You want to have the upside of the plus 105 and you just split the exposure. So for me, I have unit, half unit on both. I think you should do the same. Both grading out really, really nicely relative to some of the sharper books. And that does it for another edition, Monday night football edition of Ladies, Leans, Likes and Locks. Hit the like button on the way out. Let me know what you think of my plays. If you have any plays that you're really interested in, it's going to be a fascinating Monday night football Atlanta, maybe 0-2 right out of the gate. Those are the things dreams are made of. But producer Jacob, thank you so much for your hard work. And hey, let's finish out a week two strong. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NFL streets on Monday night.